Now, just to change a little bit uh, in our session, I would like to ask uh, all of you, like, how do you balance work and life? I know there is a lot of work going into being an entrepreneur and doing everything. It's all very rosy when we see it. But I know it is a lot of sacrifice from the kids, from the uh, wife, the spouse, and also from you having that guilt. I'm not spending enough time with my kids. I'm not spending quality time with my spouse. So how do you handle that? I would uh, start with Gopal. Why, that's Anna. I should call Shubhani. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's, it is it is hard. It is not easy at all because once you are kind of involved with something neck deep, uh, no matter what you do, you won't have time. So, we went on my three days. I, I sometimes tell her, like my son and Prashant Anumesh growing up, I didn't, I didn't realize when he went to middle school and I just found him in high school. Like, the 10th grade is like, oh, 10th grade, huh? <laughs> when did that happen? Like, uh, everything was. I tell you, like without Shubhani, I'm done. I'm done. Like, it was not going to happen. She, she, so there is a lot of that sacrifice. I wouldn't call it sacrifice from my side. I was having fun building a company, but it was more sacrifice from Shubhani's side, I think. She was the one that was, you know, chauffeuring kids around, going attending school meetings, attending the homework, you know, doing everything that, everything else. Can you also know about your kids? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, they, they grew. <laughs> they grew. Yeah, most of the time, they were they just grow like weeds. Uh, but one of them, both of them did fairly well. Um, but, but you can see that they are more close to mom, obviously. <laughs> Your mom was there. But that, I think, is one inevitable thing about, about and I'm being, being an entrepreneur and running a company. Because you are now running payroll for 100, 200, 400, 500 people. Uh, you, that sense of responsibility kind of weighs in on your shoulder. Uh, that, so the other part of it invariably suffers, and I really don't have a very good answer for that. But on the contrary, one of the things that good thing has happened is, I mean, I think I got involved with my son's uh, school quite a bit, with my daughter's school, as a way of kind of compensating for that. You know, you figure out some way of doing it. So I got involved with my daughter's school. I was in my in the governing council for the middle school. I was involved with the robotics team in Northview and my son was in high school. That was one way of connecting with my with my son, right? Um, do something, build something with him. But but that became very interesting. It became so big that I now have a foundation that runs the Northview Techno Titans Foundation itself. And my son is long gone, my daughter is long gone, but now I'm more involved with them than, than I was before them. <laughs> Finding an additional alternate path, uh, passion through your kids. And, yeah, and, and it's, very, it, it's a lot of fun to be involved with the kids. That's what I realized. And I think I, I got involved with them at the right age too, like when they were in, in middle and high school. So, um, because they, they, they were developing their personalities and, and it was interesting to see, see them like, Scary, similar to me. I'm like, holy cow, that's dangerous. <laughs> but, it, but, but it was fun, but yeah, it, it's not easy. Now, work life balance, 10 years of it was not, was not fun at all. Like, I could barely see them because most of the time, when I'm there and I come home, they used to sleep. So that was, that was not bad. That was very bad. What was your experience, Chandanji, with your family, growing up with kids, spending time with the family? <laughs> I would say my experience has been probably opposite, right? Uh, I think a lot of things I did beyond, you know, work and whatever you're expected to do, including teaching in uh, Dajay Tech, which is what I did for a couple of years right after my kids were born, was because when my kids were born, I think life till then was different. I, I, I could take care of things as needed, you know, do some fun stuff out of, out of normal when I wanted to. So when my kids were born and I saw these really young, you know, two, two days old babies, right? Premi is under five pounds. I think there was a stark realization that what did I do, right? Why did I bring these two babies in the world that in addition to having a lot of good things, also have a lot of bad things. 
and what part of that bad can I change for them? So they potentially could have a slightly better life. Right? And can I can I address some of the challenges that I faced so that they won't face? And particularly, I think, for example, I've heard from a lot of people, hey, how can you do so many things? I wanted to change that for them. That, you know, just because somebody didn't do, again, many of you know, they're really good at cooking, both are middle schoolers, because they've seen me try out things, or Kavita try out things. They're, they're really good at painting, because, you know, they, they, they see that that's not like just taking only work seriously. They've seen that I take painting also very seriously, right? So that is the thing I've tried to inculcate in them. That just because something's hobby doesn't mean that you keep it as something you do on your calendar that always gets shifted up. I actually show them at the beginning of the year, this is my calendar for non-work things. These are the songs I'm going to write. These are the paintings I'm going to do. These, these are the things I want to write. These are the non-curricular things. I have a calendar for that too, right? It's, it's you know, expensive. But I, I try to inculcate that in them that these are not things that you should do when you retire. There's a need to do it. Those also as seriously with the level of quality and execution. So, in that sense, I'm glad that I've actually figured the other way around. That because of kids, I've actually put more structure to it. Earlier, I used to do those as have hobbies. Now, I've tried to raise them in a way so that they, they don't think that writing a song or making a video or making a new dish is something extraordinary or something that you should do once in a while. They do it as part of daily life. Right, and I think that's what has helped me. Right? If 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 kids weren't there, I would take treat those as hobbies. I would treat them as a thing you do once in a while, not care about the quality. I think it's the other way around that I have actually gotten better work life balance with a bigger family because I have realized that if I don't raise them that way, if I don't inculcate in them that other things are as important as work is, then they will feel the same burnout. Right? So today I see them literally in 10 minutes do calligraphy because they've been doing it for a long time. They're writing songs, they're making a cooking, they're you know, doing other fun stuff because I've tried <laughs> to raise them in a way that this is not, you don't find balance, you live it. Yeah, right. that's what I try to do, and I discovered that when I realized that I can't have this these young babies grow up and suffer through the same things. I guess self discovery is very very important uh, through this whole process. We discover ourselves, and we know that we have to bring the balance. So why not uh, we make it a part of our life? As in corporate world, they say if something doesn't go on calendar, it will never be done. So you're so right on your point. Uh, like as an educator, sharing sharing that input is very very important. Like uh, even the young parents, the young adults, and the kids. You know, I want to do this. I want to do this. But I want to do this. But when are you going to do it? Unless and until you don't break down your goals, short term, mid term, and long term goals, and don't work towards it, you're not going to achieve. It might be your personal goals. It might be any kind of your goals, not just your work. I think I'm fortunate that Kavita supports it. Uh, secondly, I also realized that when you define it that way, you don't need to worry about did I go on that vacation or somebody else went on that vacation and so I need to go on that vacation or I need to replicate somebody else's happiness to feel happy, right? That is what has really helped me also in that sense. Because happiness I, is in the moment, you know? It's in the moment with whatever you are doing. Now, let's move on to um, Rahul and ask him something about his family. How does he manage through his traveling and venturing? Are your kids and wife also uh, explorers like you or do you find something different in them? Well, it's kind of blends in there. I mean, uh, let me start it from the beginning. And I can relate a lot to Chandan because I'm also a proud father of twins. I have a boy and a girl. They are 11th graders. And um, 
on the family support i mean when i first got into the business uh, of course uh, swapna was working professionally in it and then she gave me a free hand to explore whatever i needed to do i never had to think about uh, how to bring the food on the table during that period of time but like for chandan said once we had twins the whole i guess whatever we did before that changed completely as now here we are we have two small babies and it is me and swapna and of course some support system from india and you know what to do but that gave us a much better structure you know the first very first thing that she did was she said okay rahul i'm going to basically quit my job and focus on it while you're working and even as kids with twins i mean two of us were not enough you know and definitely if i'm traveling then uh, it was very difficult on her and chandan you might probably relate that at one and a half and two years age she didn't even have a chance to go to the grocery because like she would get one kid ready by the time she's getting the other one pehla ne boot bit karan parat saga pehla pasand ke lela sa you know so it was very very difficult and she had to go through a very uh, challenging time sometimes when i was not in town but then when i was back in town actually i spent all the time with the kids there was really nothing other than being with the kids learning what they did and i actually was uh, very hands on at that time and i'm hands on today as well and then as they grew to the elementary school later part then i kind of uh, tried to work on blending my travel with their uh, time off from school and then i would take my kids with me you know and then there was a time when i said swapna i mean i think you've you've really dedicated 6 7 years of your time staying home and i think you should go back and enjoy what you like to do you know and so that's been like kind of uh, the trend that uh, we set and i think uh, being with the family being with the kids learning what they do teaching them what to do that really has been the best part of my life i mean Uh, because being in the business you see your peers they are all about the bottom line they are all about how more no more to profit to make what's the next thing and i think uh, you know i was very fortunate with the roots being from a maharashtrian middle class family that that never fascinated me and i could try to give the best balance of my work and uh, family sure thank you so much rahul i guess uh, that's very important too you know just striking the balance and also giving the freedom to your family to choose what they do because they also supported you when you really need it absolutely like it's very few families you know think about equality think about encouraging uh, they do okay if i encourage then probably i will not get enough time for my own passion you know so yeah. you know they kind of though they are more than willing to support their partner but still somewhere down the line they're selfish okay so if i do that she will start pursuing then i'll not have enough time to do what i want to do i guess uh, that's that's a perfect way you know like supporting each other because she supported you now you wanted to support absolutely her. i mean without her support i don't think i would have been anywhere close to what i'm today you know yes yes thank you so much for sure. bringing yeah. up that Now I'd like to ask Ajay ji how he balances and how he does things. So Ajay ji, I think uh, you see the common theme here, right? So the reason we are here and we're able to do what we want to do from our own professional passion is simply because of our spouses, right? You know, had it not been them, in my case, Ms. Anita, you know, she is uh, educated. She had worked in the industry, but when uh, it came to a point where we needed to raise our children. she said i'm going to give up my job you focus on your career and let me raise the ch- children right um you know if, if if i had to say one thing that i probably could have done different or better probably i think spending more time with the family in my immediate family but on the, on the other side i also look at i truly believe in what some believe in also they were put on the come i truly believe the entire universe is our family right it's my community is my family my friends are my family right so you know the <laughs> policy is that uh, um, i do spend quite a bit of time in the community service and that could not have been possible without my family support they know that and in fact like gopal and chandan i do share with them as to what my priorities are for this year what i have done in the last month in fact for the last four years i started sending them a monthly report i literally send them a, a score card here is what i set my goal here is what i'm doing here is my commitment but i try to fix fit in some time for the family whether it's a vacation you know cooking at home sometimes once in a while helping them in the gardening and all i'm not the best in everything 
But, uh, you know, they have been very supportive, my wife particularly. In many times I had to let go some of the stuff at home and I go out and get involved in the community activity. You know, I, Chandra, I think you remember this one. Between 2002 and 2006, for four years literally, day in, day out, there was nothing but BMM. You know, that was, was not because of me. It was basically Anita was fully supportive. And, you know, I, I truly appreciated that. And uh, even now, Yes, I do feel that I could have spent more time with my family, but I'm so blessed that I have a much larger family. You know, here in the community, in the broader community in Atlanta, in the US, all over the world. And every one of them are part of my family. And anything that I can do to be part of their journey in good or not so good time, that to me is a family time. And as I said, you know, my family support me, they understand, and they see my passion, and that is what it is. So I think one thing that I would say is that, you know, it's, you've been hearing consistently that a lot of people have added to my life journey, to my life progress, gurus and friends and the families and other people, right? So as a part of that, I think, you know, recently I founded a Guru Seva, a non-profit organization in India. It's an uh, honor to my all gurus that includes even my friends, my teachers, whether it's postmaster, my mom, my grandparents. Because I do see there's a, a unmet need. There are some challenges. There's a different way that we can help them. And uh, I have a broader vision. I think uh, I shared with uh, Rahul and the Chandan. Gopal, sorry, I didn't have a chance to talk to you. But, uh, you know, I'm working in that direction. I think we are, we are going to start slowly. You know, whether it's this year, five people, next year, ten people, slowly, in the next five years, I would hope to at least ten seniors we can support them through their Guru Seva. A non profit organization. But anyway, so family uh, work life balance, I think it's because of uh, my wife's support and my children, they're understandable. And, uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. Thank you. Thank you for your, for whatever you shared with us. See, uh, like to summarize, like what I feel um, everybody, how they arrive at work life balance is by appreciating their family, being supportive, giving them the freedom. And also letting them know what your goals are, being very clear, being modeling like Chandan, you know, and giving opportunity like Rahul and, you know, giving your own commitment, saying that this is your passion like Ajay. And like Gopal, like being involved with them in something what they like, what he likes and finding something, a shared goal and working towards it. I think these are all the ways, like you find your own way through your journey, how you can do it. Like, see, um, like young adults or uh, newly people, like everybody comes here with the American dream. They have immigration issues. So they have to stay in a job to stay here and get a green card. Like, what would you say? Like, for them, like, if I have to stay here, you know, I cannot be an entrepreneur. You know, I have to be in a job. I have to get my salary. I have to work in nine to five. That is when I can stay here. Then is when I can think about fulfilling life, doing things. Because if I don't earn, if I don't get a check and my salary deposited in my bank, I'm not going to get I cannot feed my family. I have to pack my bags. So this uncertainty is always there. And with this changing technology, uh, most people coming for an American dream from the IT technology has created a lot of confusions among this in mind. Like even in my family, my husband is a believer that yes, one person in the uh, family has to be focused to you know have meet those basics. Then the other person can explore. So what you guys like you people have been into corporate sectors, you know have led this uh, situation. But there is a process to get green card and be here wherein you really can focus on doing some other thing. So what would you like um, uh, to give um, some few tips or some few inputs from your own experience? Like how, like how they can build their own network in the process, how they can start a side game or how can they recognize various opportunities and build some skills required for it? I would like to start with um, Ajay Ji. So I'll keep it uh, brief, Anjita Ji. I think uh, the first and foremost, what I would encourage everyone is that overcome the fear. Fear can come in different format. It could be a fear of inferiority. It could be fear of failure. It could be fear of, so I need to put in extra effort, like commitment, right? It could be fear of change, right? If you don't let that go, you will not be able to make a progress. I think that to me is the most important thing. I think Gopal said the only thing that is constant is a change. 
believe me, that is coming. Nobody expected the pandemic, it is camp, right? We all managed it. So be prepared for that. Second thing that I would say, a lot of people say is that, uh, you know, the, the luck fact has to be there. I might slightly disagree on that one. I don't believe in that. That's just me, okay? So I would say that um, being prepared for that opportunity, right? Just be prepared all the time. Do the best that you can. Learn as much as you can. Meet with the people. Ask for their help. And when the opportunity is presented to you, seize on it. Seize on it. Don't wait for that love to happen. Don't go and stand in front of the God and say, God, please give me that, right? It's not going to happen. Just be prepared, right? The other thing that I would say that when the opportunity is given to you, do your best possible job in the job that has been given to you. Don't think about tomorrow. Because if you fail in what has been given to you today, tomorrow is not going to come. And lastly, I would say that, you know, don't chase the success. I would say chase the progress. Success is a variable. It will constantly keep on changing. Because I know, to me, I think as I said, if I could afford the parlage biscuit every week, that was to me a success. But if I would stop right there, if I would have had the support and the belief that I can do more, I would have not come forward, right? So don't chase the success, chase the, su chase the process. But along the way, I would say, if you don't know how to make the friends, but at least don't make the enemies. There are so many great people, meet with them, talk to them, get to know them, and don't be afraid to ask for the help. People are there, genuinely want to help. You know, there are great people on the panel and there are so many people outside. Before I close my thing, I would like to really, really thank Maharashtra Mandar. It is one of the, one of the platforms that I have been able to seize upon, leverage it, meet with great people, get inspired myself, and continue to get myself inspired. So, thank you. Thank you, Ajay Ji. Now, I would like to ask uh, Chandan Ji, how would you feel? What kind of opportunities um, can people get and how they can build themselves? Yeah, and, and, and I'll answer that in context of what you're saying, asking, right? The, the, the green card part, and I can't really start something right now. Uh, look at it, to look at it from the other angle, right? Uh, I would say look at the bamboo tree, right? It's, it's, I, I've actually seen bamboo trees in my native place. For the first few years, you actually don't see the bamboo tree growing, okay? Um, because it's growing underground. It's, it's developing strong roots. And once it comes out, it literally grows half a feet to a feet a day. Faster than any other tree. But for a significant time, it's actually just growing underground and you don't see any results. I would say being on green card, the time it takes, all of it, use it to your advantage. <laughs> you give, give yourself the time. Right? You don't actually have to show success at that time. You, everybody knows. Right? Focus on what problem that you want to solve. Okay? Just focus on that. And actually don't even like, think hard about it. Just enjoy your life. That problem will come to you at the right time. Just keep your mind open. Enjoy your life. You're on green card. You're on H1. You have limited flexibility. Don't worry about it. Enjoy your life. It's really when you're most relaxed, right? It's really when you're at most peace that a good problem will come to you and say, say to you, you're the right person, solve the problem. Then, once you know that problem, go find the education for that, go find the mentors for that, and be prepared to spend time. Gopal described his process. He started after 9-11, I believe he exited in 2014. It took him 13, 14 years to recognize the problem, to exit. No success of you know, significant importance comes overnight. And there is no better time than being on H1 where you get six years to keep your head down, keep learning about that problem, get very familiar with what the problem is, what kind of solutions have not worked. Give, give that incubation period. And then when you're on the other side, take the plunge 
when you take that plunge like a bamboo tree your your roots are going to be so deep that you will actually grow at the pace that you always anticipated when you start the venture thank you thank you chandan that's so very rightly said i would like to ask rahul now like what he thinks like what are the opportunities i know you mentor um, the foster kids such a humble noble deed um we really um appreciate that you do that but but having done that having that experience what would you like to tell uh, our middle schoolers and the high schoolers or even uh, young mothers who have just uh, given birth to their kids and now they want to, since they started school they want to start back their career step back into it because you help even your wife get back so could you share from your experience what are the opportunities how do you Sure. I mean, I'll start with the context that you were give, uh, earlier asking about the green card and the challenges, you know. Yes. And I think that it is about how you approach a problem, you know, because we all here are the first generations, most of us. So we have gone through the process of green card. We have gone through the process of citizenship. And I think uh, the times have certainly changed. I mean, I got my green card in the late 90s and now it's uh, 20 years later. So first of all, I would certainly, yes, there is a problem. I mean, the green card process is slow. and you you kind of have a hanging sword you know you don't know when you will get it whether you will get it or whether you might have to move back so yes i mean accept the problem i mean this is a challenge no doubt about it but i think that uh, it is important not to go into a denial mode rather embrace that challenge and look at it from a broader perspective you are looking at a ground level start looking at from say 10000 feet and look at this whole world as your opportunity Yes, 30 years back we were all coming to US. 20 years back we were coming, and that is a dream land. Everybody says that, but it is not true anymore. I mean, and in my particular case, I'll tell you that there have been more opportunities on business which are outside America, which are not in the developed countries. And I'll tell you this right now: that next 20 years, it is Asia and Africa that you are going to see the highest growth. So don't look at it from a standpoint that oh, are you are green card? No, or after my band was gone. तुम्हारा बैंड अगर बजेगा तो तुम चाहोगे इफ यू से नहीं बजेगा तो कभी भी नहीं बजेगा एंड फॉर दैट इट इट कम्स आउट टू वन थिंग सेल्फ बिलीव यू बिलीव इन योर सेल्फ यू नो बिलीव इन वॉट यू गॉट वेर वॉट गॉट यू हियर इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस यू नो सो येस डेफिनेटली देर इज अ चैलेंज आई एम नॉट डिनाइंग दैट बिकॉज आई वेंट टू द सेम थिंग वेन ग्रीन कार्ड केम इन आई वॉज लाइक यार ऑफ सिटीजनशिप कब मिलेगा मुझे यूएस पासपोर्ट कब मिलेगा एंड वी ऑल हैव द सेम माइंड सेट आई मीन वी हैव कम फ्रॉम द सेम लैंड यू नो सो एक्सेप्ट द प्रॉब्लम बट there is lot more opportunity which you don't see you know and i give a perfect example of like in the iq test that we all probably know you know there are nine dots and you connect with four lines without moving the pencil to complete those you have to go out of the box you know and it's the same thing you start thinking beyond beyond the focus of what you do in the colleagues what you do at your community green card nahi milega to okay are green card nahi kuch nahi hoga as long as you keep your head above the shoulder you can always find a way you know and then coming back to the foster kids and mentoring i mean i've got about 75 to 80 students now that i've been mentoring for last 5 years and believe it or not i'll tell you that at least i can speak for our generation our generation at that age were nowhere close to what this generation at that age is you know they are extremely smart they are talented the if i have to pinpoint one thing that i feel uh, they feel there is a challenge that there is a there are more distractions than what it used to have in our time and there is tremendous peer pressure you know and i think these two things kind of go hand in glove and if if the kid can get into the focus yeah if you are not getting good grades which is mostly the challenge because there is a distraction but that doesn't mean that kid is not talented you know he has a talent which probably i mean compare one kid one comparing one kid to another is actually insult to both you know and like chandan mentioned in his earlier speech we i grew up in vilepar lane now madhura babu high school was english medium and if you don't get good score in science tera kuch nahi hoga maths mein acha nahi milega tera kuch nahi hoga to tera fail rahega So you have i mean I'm, i feel sorry you know excuse me if i say this but you do not have the capability of judging the kid just because you are a teacher and honestly we all came through that same uh, mindset you know the social conditioning the where the place where we brought up like yes don't study you don't think you cannot be successful in 
So there is no one formula that can fit everybody. I mean, just because one person is doing one kid of 11th grader is shining, writing codes and coding and writing and making apps. That is not the only path of success because in real life, every kid has a different question paper. So don't try to copy what he's doing. You know? So that is the message that I would like to give. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rahul. Now I would like to ask Gopal what he thinks, like what are the opportunities? I know you believe in sowing the seed in the end generation through the community services, whatever you do. Uh, I know you co-chair um, Atlanta Time where you inspire more kids and train them, mentor them towards entrepreneurship. So how how do you give that opportunity to them? Do you uh, well, I mean, that's answering your question about the, the green car, right? To First of all, I don't think I can add anything more than this. You guys nailed it. The three of you guys, I think I 100% agree to that. But I will add a couple of more points to this. First, when the when 9 happened, I was actually, literally it was one of, one month that I got my green card. Right? So because I was technically on an H1 at that point of time. Um, so there is no reason why you cannot think about your own concepts. Uh, green card is just an excuse. Uh, there, are, there is Gigaplex Academy right there where uh, Chandan is running, which uh, which you can use available there. There is Thai Atlanta. There is there is a lot of networking events. There is middle school programs in Thai. There is high school programs in Thai. There are university programs in Thai. Uh, there are a lot of mentorship. Amazing people in town. Uh, like people, people I would I wish I would have met 20 years back are there to coach and mentor you, there is no excuse. I think green card is just a, a very easy way. I don't have a green card is a very easy excuse that people give themselves uh, to say, I cannot do anything more. Uh, actually, other than that, I think there is everything else you can do. That's one. The other, the other two suggestions I normally give to everybody, including my own kids, is the most dangerous addiction in the world is actually salary. Um, you get very comfortable and complacent with that. Um, and you think that it is very secure. You think that it's going to, it's nothing insecure in this world. There is no such thing as job safety. Uh, you are actually more, much safer working for yourself than working for anybody else. Uh, the faster you realize that, the better, better off uh, you will be in life, right? So that's one advice I give. Like literally my son uh, and my daughter, I was like, I do not want you to, to go beyond, you know, go look for a company that pays you well. You go look for opportunities that you learn. You will, the, the idea is to learn, the idea is to earn money is a side effect. You will, you will have it anyways. Um, so that's one. The second, other, other thing specifically to younger kids who are listening, I would, I would like to add it to We, uh, Asians and Indians in particular, give way too much importance to college. Like, way too much importance. College is just a, a, it's a, for me, I always literally tell my kids, it's a glorified hotel. Um, you don't celebrate living in a glorified hotel. You celebrate the everything else you do. It's just that you live in that hotel for four, four years. It so happens that you live in the hotel for four years. So you go to college to learn and meet people. Education happens on the side, right? And you build a network in college. You build a relationships with kids, other kids, light up relationships that you can, you can build with other people. That's why you go to college. You understand why you go to college. Don't give it so much importance that you literally sacrifice all of your life just to enter into one college. Right? And then later on realize that it was just a four year temporary blip in your 50 year career. Right? So it's a, that's another advice I always, always give kids. And third is, I think as parents, uh, let, and we, I, I think Rahul, you said that kids here are extremely smart, right? Extremely smart. Uh, like I'm, I'm myself, I've been mentoring about like 15 years now in Thai, uh, seen high school kids go through it and I'm amazed how smart they are. Like, my can day better than what I was when I was in high school. Like, like, so I'm very, very optimistic about the future. You know, I, I know that the kids that we have in Atlanta, our community kids, uh, the access they have, uh, the, the world view they have, they are very proactive, they are very vocal, right? Like my daughter and all my son, they are very vocal about like racial rights, racial issues, 
they will not shy away from things. Uh, they will take climate change head on. I know. I'm, I'm actually more optimistic about the future than I was with the past. Right? We will solve every big problem that comes to us. Uh, I think these kids are so smart. We come to the robotics lab. We have. We can see what these kids can build. I can guarantee you, they will come up with some solution for climate change. This they are. Ex- they are very resourceful. They know where who to go to, where to ask. How they raise one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year? High school kids start making phone calls to to various organizations, right? And and that's the power. Like right? they know they can do it, and they are so confident about it. So I think the kids have everything. It's just sometimes parents come in the way. Uh, of what they think, we put our ambitions on their head, which most, which I encourage all of my friends not to do. I think trust your kids, gut instinct, he is right, <laughs> because you don't know America as well as they do. Um, so follow their instincts, and for people who are in green card, again, it's an excuse, guys. There is literally nothing that is stopping you. Channel uh, Peter Plex is there. There is like. Which of us all around? We are here to help. Ask a question. Then we know. Um, there are thousands of people in Atlanta that can help you. Thank there are thirty incubators, by the way. There are thirty incubators in town. Each one of them hosting at least hundred to hundred and fifty fifty companies. Where there is a ton of people available for each one of one of them. So Atlanta is is literally the next Silicon Valley in my mind. Thank you so much for your wonderful insight, uh, Gopal Ji. As the educator uh, Parker Palmer puts it, the shape of our knowledge becomes the shape of our living. It's so very true. Um, so even to help, uh, like the people who have lost jobs during COVID and all, Seva organization did introduce a Seva career program. So through this session, I would also let all the people who know. that you have support if you are looking for a job you have in any situation there is a program so to talk more about it why not ask ajay ji the pioneer of that organization who works towards it for the mission ajay ji so i would like to just make a correction there i am not a pioneer <laughs> yes i have been part of the seva uh, atlanta chapter since 2006 i think uh, gopal knows this one um And uh, as you rightfully say, right. So one of the things that we realized quickly when uh, pandemic hit was obviously there were a lot of people either they had lost the job or they are on the verge of losing the job or they have fear of losing the job. And it was loud and clear. And I would say, unfortunately, unfortunately, many of our community members didn't feel comfortable to go out and say that I need help. few who came forward we realized that there's something that we can add well again i go back to what i used to say that look at the problem find out as to where you can add the value and you know i was fortunate enough to convince the seva organization of national team to say here is a rising need i have a passion i think i have some knowledge and i know some people that i can reach out where we all can come together and help we had five different programs within the seva for career one was helping them to build their toolkits i call we had free trainings free coaching we also had the mentoring program some of you were part of that go i think chandan you were part of that mentoring program we had job posting we had you know uh, other activities also we we provided them so within the seva for career so we had five different platforms that we have built we have implemented there are a lot of people who got benefit out of that including some of the people who are on the senior level in their own corporations i also would like to give a shout out to many of the senior executives in atlanta many of the entrepreneurs in atlanta all over the us who came forward wholeheartedly for just one email that i sent out to many people i said here is what we are trying to do it here is our target audience here is what we are seeking for they wholeheartedly supported and there are many many people who have benefited and they continue to benefit the second part i would say there were a lot of students who were on f1 there were some in h1 go back to your point they were all struggling right so through seva for career platform we were able to help if not all of them at least few of them and our intent is to continue to embark and expand that uh, platform and continue to make that services available for anyone everyone 
we did not look as to where they come from. It is not just necessarily for the Indian. It is not necessarily for students. It is not necessarily for the people in the middle career. It is not necessarily for the people who just have entered the job. Anyone, everyone who need any support in terms of their career progression, it is not job finding, the career progression. So that, that uh, uh, resources are available. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to talk offline. But uh, thank you for asking that question, Arunjitaji. Thank you. Thank you, Arunjitaji.